after a lot of research we found out the top interview questions that have been asked in the year 2022 so without further delay let's get into it the type can be divided into four major categories there were the questions were asked which was flow level pressure and temperature so let us start with flow so in flow one of the most asked questions is how to mount the transmitter in gas service especially for orifice flow meters so let's take this example here's your pipe and here's gas flowing through it now the transmitter is put on top of the pipe or top of the tapping and the second thing which is important to note here is that the slope of the tubing has to be towards the pipe now what is the use of this thing is because if suppose the gas service also has some liquid entrance in it you would not want that to get trapped in your impulse lines so because of gravity the fluid is always going to go downward and is always going to remain in the pipe and it won't be a dead leg for the transmitter now the next question is what do you do in liquid services in liquid services the transmitter would be below the tapping and the slope remember that the slope will always be towards the transmitter and not towards the pipe why because you want the liquid to be trapped here and if there is any gas which is lighter it will always stay up and it will never come to your transmitter and thus the gas would not get trapped inside your impulse lines finally you might ask for liquid services is same so would it be same for steam services the answer is yes for steam services also the transmitter is put in the downward direction so that the water gets condensed and it is able to store in the impulse line such that the steam cannot directly hit the transmitter and damage it the next most asked question is the orifice standards so the first orifice standard which is the most used is iso 5167 and the second one which is used is apa mpms 14.3 the apa standard is specially for the hydrocarbon industry and the second important thing is flange standards so orifice flanges are special they have holes drilled into them they have jack screw etc so for that you have asked me be 16.36 which especially caters to orifice standard now in terms of our categories we saw about flow right level pressure temperature are still there so let us try to look especially into what are the two most asked questions for level instruments first is what shall be the chamber material of magnetic level gauges and why is this special so in the chamber of magnetic level gauges shall never be carbon steel the material would be either ss316 as minimum or something higher maybe hastel etc but never carbon steel but why is this case because carbon steel has magnetic in nature and can interfere with our measurements so as instrumentation engineer is we must recommend there should be minimum ss316 now the next question which is asked is what shall be the choice of instrument in vacuum service for measuring level will you go for ultrasonic or radar instrument but and why is this the case the answer is yes both of these are amazing instruments they use their waves to transfer and find out the level but ultrasonic especially uses sound waves and we all know that sound waves cannot travel in vacuum thus our choice for vacuum services would be radar and not ultrasonic now in terms of our categories we have looked at flow level now let us try to look at temperature instruments so in temperature this is the very easy question but it has been asked a lot of times that is what is pt100 in rtd so in rtd pt100 is basically the pt stands for the material which is platinum and the 100 stands for 100 ohms at 0 degree celsius now let us look at thermocouple so thermocouple the question asked is which is the most common type of thermocouple that the industry uses and is there any issue with j type thermocouple that an engineer must take care the answer is thermocouple is very simple and working it is basically two dissimilar metals put together and because you, when you heat both the junction at a different temperature and emf is produced which is this is what is called as the seebeck effect and the k type thermocouple is one of the most used thermocouples throughout the industry its range is from minus 200 degree celsius to around 1200 degree celsius but remember in the extreme ranges you need to take certain precautions and you can use it within this ranges now the type g type thermocouple can be used but remember that it has iron constant in and iron is very prone to corrosion so all methods have to be taken to prevent corrosion if you are using j type thermocouple now the next is especially the most important of all pressure instrument now in pressure instruments you will have to understand is one of the very key things which is asked in interview is the pressure curves and can you draw this diagram because they are very impressed if you can draw and explain the diagram so let us try to draw a simple diagram where we'll call this line as the atmospheric pressure this is the pressure that you experience when you're standing walking on the earth etc in terms of gauge pressure you can call it zero gauge pressure now anything above it that you're measuring is now in terms of gauge pressure so example let's take this point as 1 bar 
per gauge. So it is measuring with respect to your gauge pressure. Now, once you know this thing about one bar gauge, if I try to look for what is absolute pressure is something which goes the pressure which is absolutely having no presence of any pressure at all. That means this entire area is nothing but vacuum and this point here is called as full vacuum. So at full vacuum you will be having is minus one bar gauge if you talk in terms of gauge otherwise in terms of PSI it will be minus 14.7 PSIG. Now this if you're trying to measure from absolute you the same pressure you will get it as two bar absolute. So if you try to compare and put it side by side you would realize that one bar gauge is basically nothing but two bar absolute. So if you draw this diagram explaining atmospheric pressure, gauge pressure, full vacuum, the interview would be quite impressed and would be sure that you are very clear with these concepts. Now, the next thing is when to use 2 valve manifold, 3 valve manifold and 5 valve manifold. So remember that for a transmitter, 2 valve manifold is very simple. You have two valves to it. One is going to be your isolation valve. The other is going to be your vent and drain valve. This is how it looks in the real world. And this is the diagrammatic representation that you can draw. Second is when you have 3 valve manifold. Now 3 valve manifold here is used for DP transmitters. You will have these two tappings or these two valves is open and this one is closed. But when you want to remove the transmitter out, you would have to close these two things. You would have to open the equalization valve. And you know, if you want to vent or drain it, then you might have to use maybe the transmitter vent or drain to release it out either to the atmosphere or to a closed drain system. But when it gets to a five way manifold now here, a lot of configurations available. This is one of the most used configurations here. You would keep the remember the two extreme sides are always open and the middle three work together. So the middle three are closed in normal operation. Remember that five way manifold is specially used for venting things or draining things. So you have the extra precaution or the extra way to vent or drain. Now here in the operation when you want to remove your transmitter you would have to keep the extreme two valves closed and the middle three are going to remain open. So the first two would equalize it and the third one would vent it out either to a closed system or to the atmosphere. So 5A manifold is specially used when you want to drain it, etc. Now remember one thing that when you have learned all of these topics, there is one more topic which is left, which is control valves. So here's a video here where I've talked about the top three questions that have been asked in control valves. And if you have liked this video, please subscribe. Let's meet next Saturday and learn something new again.